planet Earth, an amazing, life-giving rock in the vast emptiness of space. Millions of plants and animals call this rock home, from the tiny crabs to the single biggest creature in the world, the blue whale. Life on this planet would not be possible without our oceans. They make up over 70% of the surface and have a diversity of life that is unrivaled by anything else on Earth. The world's oceans provide food for millions of creatures both above and below the surface and human beings are no exception. For centuries, coastal countries have relied on fish as a stable food source and now even though the majority of people on this earth no longer depend on fish as their only food source, there is still a high demand for the seemingly endless stream of fish. Small family fishing boats bloated into fleets capable of carrying over 4,000 tonnes of fish per ship. Inevitably, these ships also collected less desirable and less profitable fish known as bycatch. The term bycatch encompasses all fish caught in nets that were not the targeted species. These are usually thrown overboard to make room for the more valued fish. However, as the more valuable stocks such as tuna and cod began to decline, fishing companies tended to retain their bycatch to boost profits. Sharks and rays began to increase in popularity and were seen as delicacies. Popular dishes such as shark fin soup increased the value of shark fins and some fishing boats began removing the fins at sea and throwing the carcasses overboard to reduce useless weight and increase the space available for fin storage. Other fishing companies kept the carcasses as they could be sold for meat, liver oil and leather among other things. Until recently, sharks and rays were of low management priority, but growing concerns of sustainability prompted regulations and restrictions. But these are hard to enforce. With oceans covering over 70% of the planet, it's nearly impossible to stop every boat from fishing illegally. A recent study looking into the decline of shark and ray landings found that while foundations for improved management have been laid, they have been insufficient to account for the global reduction in fishing stocks, meaning that overfishing is to blame for the reduced amount of sharks and rays caught globally. 86 out of 147 countries surveyed reported a reduction in catch over a 60 year period. And just 10 of those countries accounted for over 62% of the total collected stocks of sharks and rays. Most of which had very limited or non-existent management programs. But hey, why worry about a few less sharks and rays in the world? Sharks and rays play important functional roles in marine environments. They help to ensure that fish species can't outcompete one another and have also helped to shape the amazing adaptations we see in a wide range of sea life. And with an estimated global decline of between 15 and 25 percent of sharks and rays, these shocking findings have prompted some countries to double their efforts in management and allow wild populations to recover before their numbers drop past the point of no return. Countries such as Chile, Colombia, Ecuador and Peru have collaborated to develop a regional plan of action to protect these animals. Similarly, West African countries have clubbed together to form better management programs across several regions. Unfortunately, this is a slow process as many countries have still not enforced the shark plan regulations designed to manage fisheries more effectively. Additionally, sharks and rays themselves will take a longer time to recover as they have slow reproductive cycles and cannot regain their numbers as quickly as smaller fish like cod and tuna. It is estimated that around 25% of sharks and ray species are threatened with extinction and until global demand reduces there is only so much that regulations can do. As long as there is demand the business will continue to be lucrative at the cost of thousands of endangered species. However, there is still hope for our shark and ray populations to recover. For example, the spiny dogfish was nearly fished to extinction and its population was thought to have fallen by 95%. But after an extensive management program and a complete ban on fishing of the species, the shark managed to recover, prompting the USA to reopen fishing of the spiny dogfish under strict regulation and quotas. So, our shark and ray populations can be saved through management programs, but it is essential for countries to work together and collaborate across the world to ensure universal protection and help to encourage every global fishing company to respect the fact that our oceans are not a bottomless pit of income.